Hey y'all, my name is Jasmine Jones and I am a licensed clinical social worker and you are now watching Black Girl, a therapist in the wild and this is a little show I like to call Therapist Sips and Reviews and today we are reviewing Abbott Elementary season three, episode three because the first two episodes were combined. I didn't realize that, but you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and the name of this episode is Gregory's Garden Goofballs. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we are sipping on like mango, cranberry, and vodka. It's what? How y'all doing? So this is this is the second installment for season three. It's the third episode in. The main focus is on Janine and Gregory um, with the background players in the back. And so we're gonna just hop right in. So this is gonna be our first preview of Janine at the district office. It kind of feels like we're doing like in the office type of vibe a little bit, like a nod to the office a little bit more than usual. Um, and she's presenting to her team that there is a kid in Jacob's class that's deaf and needs an ASL, inter is it ASL? Hard, of what is it AS? American Sign Language, ASL interpreter. Girl, see, I'm mm, already. Uh, so she's letting them know because, you know, usually, you know, they're not about to do one thing for one child. But when you have a disability involved, you know, they ain't trying to get sued. So, of course, they, you know, just tell her you just got to get all the right paperwork in. And then we see, like, I like the illustration of you have to be very mentally sound to a certain extent to deal with bureaucracy or just people that are giving you the runaround and you got to go from this place to that place to figure it out. So when you think of people in poverty mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, who have been traumatized and all sorts of things and they're trying to like get help or like go to school or, you know, live life. Just take this as an example. This is a lightweight example because my mom used to be on welfare for a little bit because she wasn't working for a little while. And having to go to the welfare office and stay there from, what time we would get there at 9 a.m.? We wouldn't leave till like 4 or 5. And I didn't know what was going on because I was in elementary school. I just knew we were in this building with all these people that looked sad. <laughs> And there was nothing to do. And I didn't know why we were there. But apparently it was because we needed to get food stamps. And that was before computers were like the mainstream thing or way. Nothing was nothing was computerized. So you had to actually go to the building and stand in line and give the applications and do all the things. Yeah. So she's showing you like what this is how people get burnt out in these situations. Because Janine's like, you know, she got good people surrounding her to give her pep talks and shit. And she's also a fixer. So it's not as hard for her as it would be for other folks, but for folks that aren't fixers and ain't got nobody surrounding them, you being told to go from one place to the next place to the next place to the next place when you already thought you had all your shit together when you walked into the building, you gonna have a good portion of them people walking out because ain't everybody mentally stable enough when you got five kids and you trying to get them in a house and you also got to make sure you make it to your shift tonight and you got to make sure that the kids get fed and you thought you had all your stuff and you was only going to be here for a couple hours and you get there and they telling you you need more things and then you just stop <laughs> you just stop don't let you have like an addiction or some shit on top of it like no you just stop you don't Janine almost gave up getting this child an ASL uh, interpreter because it was like she had to go from one place to the next place to the next place to get the notary, to get the signature, to get this, to get that. And when she finally got everything, now it came down to hiring this person. And of course, they're not trying to pay you real money. They're not trying to give you health insurance so that like, you know, like you can take care of your health and be alive to do this job. They're not trying to do all of that. And they're not paying you enough living wage for you to be able to 
Now she be liking to like bite me for out the clear blue fucking sky. I had to watch this bitch. I don't know if it's cause I'm expressive with this hand, but something about this hand, she just be just jumping and it like, it's not real. Like it's a toy or some shit. I don't fucking know. So I have to watch that. She just, she just st- stopped and was staring like, no, she, we know better. We know better. Right. Right. So we do better. <laughs> so she had to go from place to place to place this shit is exhausting and then now you gotta hire somebody and you ain't trying to pay them a living wage you ain't trying to help them out either so it's just like she almost gave the fuck up but then you know ava came ava keep calling her her mole and shit like that she ain't nobody mole (laughs) and you know like was like giving her a pep talk like no like i had to do pull strings and do illegal shit to make sure the kids got stuff most of the time she was making sure the kids got stuff because she liked the stuff and she wanted it at school but you know even the thing with the girl she came back and talked to her about the girl and that's you know got the death <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i'm a little tipsy she came back and talked to her about the girl that is deaf and she was like okay like even even with that it was like well the girl ain't catching up to my jokes i feel like ava is a fronter i feel like stuff bothers her like that and it doesn't necessarily have to like it's not about her it's about someone else like it bothers her and it makes her feel bad that someone else is going through stuff but she can only really interpret it if she makes it about herself like she cares but she can only care if she makes it about herself (laughs) so she see this girl on this tablet and she's just like why is she laughing like five seconds after i tell the joke and so she's like, no, she needs to, she needs to, you know, witness me live. Like, no, we need to fix this. Like, so she basically made it by, about herself, excuse me. And she, she went and talked to, um, what's her name? What's Janine at the district? She keep popping up at that bitch job. I'm just like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Cause like when I used to intern for LAUSD, and then I had to go to like the district office and shit like that and like do stuff or turn in paperwork or talk to the people or go to a training or some shit. You can't just walk up in there in somebody's office and, and it don't matter if you work at one of the, you, you can't do that. So, <laughs> I don't know what that shit is. I don't, mm, Ava, Ava can do things that most, it's a television show. That's what it's about. Oh, <laughs> it's not real life Uh, because in real life that girl probably still wouldn't have got that asl interpreter oh lord um or it would have taken a long long time and by the time they got her it would have been one month before the school was out but anyways so she popping up at her meeting at the office and stuff talking about she can't she can't you know get my jokes and stuff like you need to fix this and then she giving her a little pep talk and so she like thinking about it and she talked to jacob and jacob's like you can do it girl jacob whatever token in the background <laughs> what <laughs> and so then manny i still don't trust manny somebody commented on my other video was just like i don't trust manny i was like thank you i'm not the only one that doesn't trust manny i just feel like some name right about Manny. Some name right. Like, because your advice is basically to tell her some shit. I don't even know why she's telling people on the camera that she told this family to tell the school district or hint at the school district that they would they that that they would sue them. Why are you telling people on the camera that you basically did some shit? that could get you fired because my thing is is like at least don't make it no no visual evidence like girl if they see that they're gonna fire you and the fact that manny is telling her to do some shit that i mean he didn't tell her to do that let me shut up he didn't tell her to do that he told her to think outside of the box i don't i don't i just just the fact that he's like was the last person she talked to before she did that shit i just I don't know like it may come to nothing and that girl got her interpreter and everything's fine but I just feel like you did some shit that could get you fired girl and you ain't even clocking that shit and then you talked about it on camera so now there's evidence of you doing that shit to that could get you fired and I'm just Janine Janine honey bunch oats it's one thing to do the thing but it's another to have evidence that you did the thing that's all I'm saying and so I'm just I just want to put on Manny. I don't like him. <laughs> he just gives me this weird smarmy 
maybe he's just like like they said his character to be this wise nigga in the background that like gives her advice because he works at the district and he's like all knowing or some shit maybe that's his character because he has no other emotional displays and i don't like it like i don't expect him to be evil or whatever but like no awkwardness no awkward moments no anxieties no like you cracking jokes all the time and you just got this charismatic vibe and charismatic is always the term they use for serial killers and so charismatic is not a good term and so i just don't like this creepy ass charismatic nigga <laughs> coming around with only one display of emotion <laughs> just hovering in the background giving Janine ideas I just don't like it but I mean I could be wrong I probably am wrong and shit you know it might not be one of them shows where it, it, people are got sneaky shit going on in the background you know like I don't think it, that's happened too much in the show like people just turn out to be just horrible fucked up people you know so maybe that won't happen maybe that won't happen and so <laughs> she ends up getting the interpreter for the little girl which is magical wonderful great i'm glad that little girl got her interpreter because you know and i'm you know i'm glad they showing her with her friends just like it because back in back when the 90s when they had somebody on tv with disabilities and shit like that their whole personality was just their disability and that was what we talked about when they came around and you know and it was just like no that's just like a thing that we need to make sure she gets accommodations but otherwise she have friends she up here laughing and stuff in the in the group she up here just being a regular ass kid and shit and i like that i like that i enjoyed that um and then gregory i i'm telling y'all this nigga is autistic <laughs> So Gregory is like, he takes his lunchtime in his classroom. He likes to eat his salad and, you know, be by himself. He likes his alone time, which is understandable because when you're dealing with a bunch of different personalities every single day, you need that. You need that. Like when I get home, I notice like outside of work, I don't talk that much to people. <laughs> I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like talking. I don't feel like interacting. I just, it's exhausting to exchange energy when you got a job like that. So, like, I get it. I get he wants his alone time. But the kids want to come in his classroom. He has no idea why these kids want to. They coming in his classroom, cracking jokes with him, giving him compliments, telling him they like him. But still, he has no idea why these kids. <laughs> I'm just like, nigga, they like you. <laughs> they like you as a human being they think you're interesting and when you first trauma let's because that's my specialty mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you have been traumatized and made to feel less than you really absolutely have no idea what it looks like when people like you like you don't like you like really just think that these people are there's something wrong with them they're taking advantage of you like the kids coming in there said that's all he could focus on sitting on my desk chit chatting about random shit farting like i would be focused on the farting too like okay it's normal to fart but you can go out in the hallway i would have just clearly explained it to the children like this the 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 your mouth and your nose are connected on the inside and so when you fart and it permeates in the air and other people can smell it, especially while it's lunchtime and people are eating. You can taste it a little bit, too. That's why, like, people can't eat a lot sometimes when it's nasty smells around. Now, you can acclimate to certain smells. Like, that's what morticians and shit and corner office niggas be doing. They be acclimating them to smell and so they don't even smell that shit. So they can eat around that shit. You know, but, like... I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to acclimate myself to your fart. You need to go step in the hallway, do what you need to do, and then you can come back inside. <laughs> that would have been a part of my boundaries. He didn't do that, though, but whatever. So when you are not used to kindness, you have absolutely no idea what it looks like because the kindness that you get from your abuser is during the honeymoon period, and it's love bombing, and it's always snatched away, and you always think it's your fault. So people coming in and being kind just remind you of the honeymoon period from your abuser, and so you just being like, what do you want? What 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 is this? Why are you set giving me compliments? The fuck? <laughs> what are you gonna do how are you taking advantage of me you just start questioning everything these people are doing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So he's questioning why these kids is coming in here. He goes to Jacob. He's like, Jacob, why the fuck these kids coming in here? You know, you need to you need to re- handle your children. I only teach first grade. Da 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 da. And Jacob's like, they just come and hang out. They like choose to do that. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, and Jacob's like, nigga, you're the cool teacher. He was like, what? Cool. Like he had never heard that fucking word before. He was like, what? It's just can't consider that people can like you, like genuinely like you as a human being. You know, like especially people that you haven't decided that you are okay with liking you. <laughs> and so i wonder what he's like in his friend group i wonder like they showed him briefly at the in the club scene but like i wonder what he's like in his friend group i mean like his friend is um what she dated his friend for a little bit last last season so like his friend got some shit going on too he's a little delayed so and he seemed like really nice and kind and stuff just you know not completely there on the upkeep sometimes and so you know maybe maybe he hangs out with people that are just really like genuinely kind people and they probably all neurodivergent and shit and he don't even realize he's hanging out with a bunch of neurodivergents he just gathered them around him because his friend is like neurodivergent and shit so you know maybe 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 he has some decent friendships too like sometimes you just don't realize it when you're neurodivergent you just look up one day and you're surrounded by other neurodivergents that's why everything's been so peaceful in your friend group <laughs> whereas before in your old friend group everything was chaotic and you didn't understand what was going on most of the time and everybody would get mad at you randomly for no reason it seems <laughs> and so like I, I, maybe he's not the people pleaser in his friend group maybe he surrounded himself by pretty decent people because the dude that dated janine was pretty decent he was a decent person he just wasn't he just he was he was just he wasn't he wasn't on the the intellectual level that janine was on so it was hard to have a conversation intellectually and also he liked social and poppy stuff that she didn't like so you know that was a thing too but that ain't got nothing to do with like developmental issues and shit but anyway it's like so he's like they think i'm cool like what is this and so like he goes back to his class and then later on in the show like they show um mr johnson come in and he had put a do not disturb sign on his door he was like i ain't have these motherfuckers i don't care if they think i'm cool i don't want them in here <laughs> and so mr johnson had to talk to him and he was like i don't like when you come up to me and give me advice and want advice from me either because he gave the kid advice about um dating and the kid wanted to buy a new chain like to impress his girlfriend and because i saw his thought pattern gregory remembered that he bought the lego flower for that woman and he reminded himself that oh i bought that for me and she didn't like that so this must this must be the same situation socializing is hard because i thought it was the same situation too but then i had to like go and fast forward and pause on what melissa said about how he was looking ugly and shit in his other chain and i was just like oh okay this is one of them situations where you know how you like gently like when you when your do start looking a type of way and you just you just gently hint at him changing his style because you know being in front of people is often embarrassing and you're tired of people coming up to you and when he's not around like why do you do got them dirty shoes on all the time like is he okay and then you just gently like or you might just buy him some new shoes for his birthday and be like look at don't you like these these are cute and then suddenly his old shoes just disappear and you i don't know and you, I don't, it's the ghost in the house, I don't know, so apparently he walked around with some chain on, I guess it looks ugly, or it looks cheap, or it looks old, and she's been trying to like, with Melissa, finesse him into like, you know, sparkling himself up a little bit, it happens, we do this, it's not right, it is manipulative, you should just come out and say like, I don't like, your, your feet stink, your shoes is dirty, <laughs> But because men are so sensitive and emotional, a lot of times they're not in touch with their emotions. You can't just come out and say it sometimes. Like you can't because they'll just take that to heart. Their little feelings will get hurt. And then you don't know what type of nigga you're going to be dealing with. The the aggressive one (laughs) or the one that isolates and doesn't want to talk to you because you hurt his feelings. Or you might be dealing with a regular, regular human being down to earth nigga that'll just be like, I get it. I do. 
it, they do stink. I am, I am going to buy a new shoe. I just let it get away from me because these are my favorite shoes and I got comfortable. But they, they are. They got a hole at the bottom. And I know they do, don't they? Yeah, they do. Right. Let's change them together. <laughs> So I think it was one of them situations and that's why socializing is hard because yeah, I didn't, I, I was just like, why are we teaching these little girls that like gifts are chains that their gifts are things that niggas buy for themselves. <laughs> but then I can see like how like playing that game with him a little bit, manipulating him a little bit to, to think that he came up with the idea to buy his own chain. I could see how that could later evolve into a grown man thinking it was okay to buy some Lego flowers for, I mean, part of it is autism. I don't care. That nigga's autistic, but I could see like, if you've had multiple experiences like that with little girls and women, as you've grown that, Oh no, like women like it when I buy things that make me happy, (laughs) but you know, I say it's for them. So we probably shouldn't be doing because it's not a it's it's not nice. We should we should. Oh God, I hate like admitting wrongness. <laughs> but you know, in order to grow, we want these niggas to change. So we have to, you know, grow and change and shit. So <laughs> I'm trying, y'all. It's coming out. So you know, we can't manipulate these niggas in that way because. If we want them to be honest with us all the time, we need to be honest <clears throat> with them <clears throat> all the time. <laughs> it was so hard. It was. It was. Oh Lord! You know we got to change the narrative, and these are like children, so these are like the perfect age to change the narrative, and you shouldn't be finessing this little boy you should just tell him your chain is green (laughs) and people are noticing and saying things to me would you like to consider changing it we can get you a new chain it ain't gotta be real honey Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that green ring around your neck that got to go are we taking a shower with it on or are we just leaving it on all the time until the oils in our skin cause it to turn green because we can't leave fake jewelry on all the time because either it's gonna rest from the water in the showers or it's going to rest from the oils in our skin (sighs) that was difficult Mm. You know, it's hard to admit when you've been fucked up and stuff, kind of, sort of, a little bit, maybe. But, you know, these circumstances where men are crazy, they make it hard for for people to be honest. Because they'll murder you just for saying no to a drink. Like, (laughs) I don't know how they'll do if you tell them their shoes are ugly and dirty and they need to change them. (laughs) go from having the greatest boyfriend in the world to now you got this nigga screaming at you and you just sitting there like I was just being honest and helpful so you know he gives the advice from his own perspective you need to like you know buy gifts for her not for yourself and you don't even need to be focusing on girls you need to be focused on school there'll be plenty of time to focus on girls and because they look up to mr eddie you know i mean he i like you know he wears the shirts that are tight but not too tight so it perfectly sculpts the musculars without looking weird and like it's choking him you know but i mean he all right like he got the nice lineup that perfectly fits his forehead with the waves that look shiny i mean he cool you know he got the smooth chocolatey skin that you know ain't got any acne or wrinkles or scars on it it's probably makeup but still the smoothness of the makeup says the skin is smooth underneath a little bit and that's good he all right and stuff he looked like he smelled good and shit i could see why the kids would think he would be interesting he came in there with a bevy of bitches not even paying attention to how people would respond to that (laughs) 
not clocking social cues and shit. So, of course, he didn't realize that would look cool to the little boys and stuff. And so, you know, they think he's a cool teacher. So, Mr. Johnson talks to him. And then, um, what's we call it? Jacob talks to him again. And then Melissa talks to him. And she's like, you know, like, you need to stop fucking up my CeeLo. I'm trying to control these relationships at this school so she don't pop off and, like, explode. And there be, like, group fights and shit in the middle of the playground and shit like kids be doing. And so, like, he's just like, I don't even know why they coming in here. I don't even like kids like that. Like, I don't even. And they were just like, well, we come to school for the kids, even on our break time. So, this kind of had me in the middle because I was just like, once again, like I said earlier, jobs like this where you have to interact with a bunch of different personalities all the fucking time are very difficult and overwhelming. And you need your breaks. You need your little mini breaks throughout the day so that you can decompress, cry, read a book, watch some funny shit on, on TikToks and stuff like that. And I could see, especially if he is autistic, autistic burnout is some bullshit. And so I could see if he needs to recharge at his lunch break. But I like how he finessed it, okay? Because you you are there for the kids and you're always working when you're with kids because they can do fuck shit like run into a door and their eyeball falls out just because they wasn't paying attention. You know, shit like that. <laughs> it's the truth and so like he finessed it and he just got them doing shit that he liked to do so he set boundaries like we're not talking about relationships and girlfriends and partners and all that other shit and they was like yeah you give bad advice and i'm just like he didn't give bad advice it's just the advice didn't fit the situation and he didn't understand the full extent of the situation because he was thinking like you know in a different way you know, when we dealing with kids, sometimes we don't even think to asking them further questions. I would ask them further questions. Like, what do you mean get a chain? Did she want you to get a chain? Why she want you to get a chain? Okay. Well, it sounds like, you know, it probably helped the relationship for you to get a chain. Let me see we have chain. What's, you know, you ain't asking all the questions. And so you just going off top, autistic. I don't care what nobody say. And so, you know, what was I saying? he got him doing things he likes to do so he got him out in the garden and they garden and that's his peaceful thing and that's his little fixation thing that's the thing that keeps him calm and shit so like that's a vibe i get it that's good so he was able to finesse it he can monitor them he can eat his lunch he can teach them about the garden he likes teaching about the plants and stuff that'd be his little garden club at lunch i would make it i would make it so it's like once or twice a week so he can still get some free time though because even then when you're doing stuff you like and you still have to socialize while you're doing it, it's still exhausting <laughs> after a while. So I liked it. I like how they brought it all together and stuff. And like, he got to see that he's likable. <laughs> he's a likable person. People like you. They like being around you. Sometimes when I think a part of it too is like, when you're not paying attention to how other people react to you and you're just focused on yourself, you don't realize that people like take that as confidence. <laughs> That's basically all it is. That's all con confidence is in bragging and uh, confidence is literally like, I'm doing what the fuck I want to do. I don't really care what people around me are doing. Like I do like these little self portraits and stuff. Like you can follow me on my Instagram. I'll put it somewhere and uh, like i'll literally just be going out i do this thing because i I talk to my clients about it it's like the i've mastered dissociation where basically everybody's just an npc character so a non-playable character like in a video game and i am able to literally dissociate my emotions from the thoughts of what people think are if they're looking at me and i just completely funnel it back into myself and what I'm doing and how I'm interacting with the world. And I just hyper focus on that. And my emotions then aren't attached to what other people are doing or what they think about me. So then basically, I don't even recognize people are in the room sometimes. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I can go a little too far and you need to like call my name a couple times and I'll be like, what? But for the most part, it works because I love myself so much more now. <laughs> 
saying at this point I could give two shits about what anybody thinks about me but you know that only works when I don't give a shit about people that's why I have to really trust somebody to be in my life because once I give a shit about you then I really care how you feel what you're thinking all this other stuff and that just opens the door for me to be manipulated and so I just have to have a lot of discernment of who I allow into my space because I will not be manipulated again if I can help it not in a malicious way anyways because we all do manipulation in some way or another if you don't keep giving me shit sometimes i'm as long as i see it's not hurting you to give me the shit i'm just gonna take the shit if a nigga want to come into my life and pay off all my credit card debt and he's a millionaire like i mean i'll probably be like you know let me get to know you a little bit longer before you just i know you're a millionaire and this is a drop in the bucket but like i've only known this is the first date <laughs> I don't want to be tied to you like that and you come and you turn out to be crazy and then you try to come back and be like I paid off all your credit card debt and now you gonna give me the pussy and then I don't give you the pussy and then now you trying to sue me because <laughs> see no I think things through people don't think things through people think oh I'm just gonna go on dinner and I'm gonna just let this nigga cater to me and da 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 nigga they keep they keep receipts on the money they spend honey and mm-hmm mm-hmm if you ain't signed a contract or nothing to say like, oh, you know, pay this off and I ain't never got to pay it back or no shit like that. They could come after you and sue you and they got money for litigation. Do you? Because <laughs> that's the worst part is the litigation. They can keep you in court for years, honey. Like, <laughs> like that's a part of why like you off top. I just can't take all the extras but if we known each other for about six months or some shit like that and you i can see that you a pretty decent person or some shit like that i might take a a, a couple thou wow <laughs> you ain't gotta pay it all off this is over time a couple thou wow here and there so that way i got enough time to pay your ass back if some shit happened there you go we gotta be smart about this because niggas are crazy and they will kill you and so you know like what was I talking about <laughs> I, I, I'm lost oh shit Gregory was in the garden with them kids oh not knowing people like you and shit and so like you you just you just don't realize it and so basically like he walking around doing his own thing minding his own business and people think that's interesting it is and it is interesting because when you are fully in yourself you are doing things that are coming straight organically from you so everything is kind of sort of new because it has your own special twist on it because you're not caring about oh i have to add this element from this tiktok you know a uh, viral thing to my stuff or i have to add this element of this fashion thing to my stuff for views you're not thinking that way you're thinking like i need to like this looks pretty with my skin tone and shit like i saw this video once to this woman and she was talking about how like oh I, I cut all my hair off and went bald because the patriarchy as a rebellion against the patriarchy because they expect us to have long hair as women and I'm just like well then you're still cutting doing shit to your hair for niggas <laughs> I want to have long luxurious hair because I want my hair to look like a thundercloud on top of my head and look like it could shoot lightning at bitches when I walk down the street <laughs> The longer it gets, the bigger it gets, the more like a storm it looks. Pow, 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 bitch, that shit is amazing. <laughs> and that comes straight organically from me. And maybe like some other women that I've seen or people that I've seen with long Afro hair and everything like that. But, you know, I want to see how it looks on me, though, because on me, it's going to look like a pow, 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 pow. it's going to look like a thunderstorm, bitch that's what i mean so like organically when stuff when you're doing things organically from yourself it looks new and it looks different because you're not you're you're adding elements that are, are purely from you 
And then, you know, little elements subconsciously from society and shit. But most of the focus is the elements that are coming purely from you and shit. And so since it's different looking because it's not a hundred or even close to a hundred percent attached to societal norms, people think that's confidence. And people are like, oh my gosh, your style, your hair, the way you walk. I'm literally just dissociating. (laughs) And so that's why when people like give you compliments, that's a part of it. Like some of it's trauma, some of it's if you have social cue issues with. But a part of why it feels odd when people give you compliments are like, you find out like you're cool in some people's eyes or something is a part of it is just like, I was just walking around doing my normal shit. (laughs) I, I didn't think it was a big deal but apparently other people do and so thanks or whatever I guess and then like grounded people will just keep going on the path of like I'm gonna keep doing my own shit because I like it people that aren't grounded enough or not grounded period will take that and let it make them have a big head and think that they need to just keep doing the same thing to get the accolades And now you're more focused on the accolades than on what you were pouring into before you even cared about the accolades. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, like it's cool and all to be called cool and shit, but I could see why he would just be like, I'm just doing my normal. I'm eating a salad. I'm wearing a shirt. I'm wearing this shirt because it's comfortable. Like I do my hair like this because it makes me feel good. Like, I eat, the, I eat the salad because it's healthy and I like plants and shit. So why not, you know, eat what I grow and shit. So that's the thought pattern of the person that you think is cool. It's like, I wear these glasses because I need to see and they fit my face and they go with my skin tone and I don't have to try too hard to match them and stuff. And so that's why I picked them. But apparently there is a fashion statement to people in a way where like, now they want to get the glasses that are similar and they want to because they and I'm just like oh well go off because <laughs> you caught me by surprise literally I'm not thinking along that path so when I react like that I'm just like what <laughs> I wasn't thinking about you I'm sorry <laughs> but I guess you know that's good that you found some inspiration in something that I did that's amazing I I love that you and I hope it inspires you to dig deeper into your stuff and create some stuff for yourself that comes genuinely from you you know what I mean so like I can see why Gregory's sitting up there with his shirt that fits him perfectly and his nice little lineup and his big old eyes that you know black it only looks good on black people the graves disease eyes that some of us have even if we don't have graves disease like i think he got some shit though like like he had a colostomy bag for a minute like he was showing it off and shit on the television on the, on instagram or something so yeah but like it those eyes only look good on black folks <laughs> no they do they do because a lot of us have them and like we don't have like any issues and health issues. Like my whole family has eyes like that. That's why it's like, I think they look cute. <laughs> so I'm going to call them for what they are. I don't care if people get mad and be like, why are you talking about his eyes? Cause they look cute. Like <laughs> Most of my uncles had them eyes. My aunties too. Like <laughs> Them eyes look cute to me. <laughs> With his cute little big old eyes and shit. You know, like I could see how he wouldn't be considering that other people are looking at him like that and how it would be weird and how you have to come to terms with that and just graciously accept that you are a likable person in your own atmosphere and in your own way and that shit that that abusive motherfucker told you was all lies because they were never grounded period they up there floating in the fucking wind (laughs) not attached to anything broken (laughs) it's magical when you come to that place because it's like wow i am interesting and cool and stuff and the shit that nigga said was a fucking lie okay let me get back to being interesting and cool and making shit because it's fun and it makes me feel good and if it happens to bring in some shit like these videos like i don't get views like that but i do it because it's fucking fun i like talking about shows and applying psychology to it because it's fun (laughs) like that's literally why i make these videos like because it's fun that's why i take breaks because when it doesn't and when it's not fun anymore 
and I'm bored with it, then I take a break. And then when I'm not bored, I come back and I have some more fun because I want to be authentic and genuine and all that other stuff. Like I won't even like post unless I feel the urge to like the post. Like I will share something and then not like it (laughs) just because like I just didn't feel the urge to like it. I don't know why. I shared it though. That's enough. You know, it was interesting enough to share. I wanted other people to see it. It's, I just didn't like. I don't. I wasn't thinking. People be taking that shit serious. <laughs> you know, I know that's the only form of income for some folks, though. You know, that's sad that the world has made it to a point where we have to basically chuck and jive sometimes in order to like get income instead of just create art for the sake of creating art because it's fun and then just have people come and look at it and then they decide that they can they'll pay for it or not you know because now ai is going to take over all that shit you know they got this new thing where you can make a movie out of ai and it looks completely real it's like a one minute reel <laughs> i'm just like sickening Y'all just gonna come up in here and let the robots take over everything. And you sit up here on these apps making your little AI art and shit because you feel the urge to create art, but you never thought you could. No, this is what it is. (laughs) You feel the urge to create art, but you never thought you could. Now you got this thing like you can write art in an easy way, easy. But really, it's not coming from you. You had an idea and then the AI created the idea from its system and computer and other people's art you didn't like you know say i want the nose to look like this i want the lips to look like this i want the to look like this i want the shading to look like this i want to you didn't do that so it's just like it's exhausting i'm tired (laughs) but whatever you know god has put me in the health field and i feel like that is the final frontier for ai it can take over damn near every job almost, but health people still want to see real people. They want to talk to a real therapist. They want to their doctors to be human beings. So, you know, we're going to ride off of that till the wheels fall off. Cause at this point I'm tired. <laughs> and then I'm just going to create my little art to decompress because art is fun. <laughs> this is art, you know? And so like, I feel Gregory. I feel him. Like, I'm glad that he like, got to experience being liked so obviously and he got to kind of sit with that it's nice to be liked especially by little children and innocent folks and stuff like that because it's genuine them kids literally like him they was coming to his room and he just couldn't get it because he never experienced that before maybe from his friendships and stuff like that but they probably don't do it in an obvious way like those kids were doing it giving him compliments and pouring it on like dudes don't talk to each other like that (laughs) so whatever and then we had this little Tariq is back and I'm not saying he shouldn't be on a show I know there is a point to have an idiot it's a comic I just don't like idiot characters especially idiot niggas um especially when they're fucking assholes so I've come to the point where I feel like Tariq is like I feel like because he's he it's it's too because they put him and Ava together at the end and Ava's an asshole but she's strategic and she plans it out and she does it for specific reasons that she wants to see certain outcomes from Tariq's an asshole, but he just isn't, is not getting certain things. He's just only focused on himself and how he feels and how he, how the world impacts him. He's not understanding anything like Ava can understand other people's feelings and emotions and stuff like that. And just, she just don't give a fuck sometimes. Tariq over here is with this woman for seven weeks and now is bringing her child to school and calling this child TJ, Tariq Jr. And saying that that's this child's name as if the child's original name never existed. You've known this family for seven weeks and you've moved in and now you're taking hobosexuals as well. Hobosexual. Um, (laughs) um, uh, We already know he ain't shit though. He's a comic relief. It is what it is. But anyways, like he's moved in, he's taking care of this child call him little tj to little tj oh child's name is kevin child is just completely off of this nigga like what's going on with you my name is kevin (laughs) and barbara because the child's in barbara's class barbara's just like what are you doing here Tariq?" Tariq teresa's like this is my little child i'm you know just in case we have a common law budding i would i would (laughs) i wish Tariq had money and he was this dumb because 
No, because he's a dumb and an asshole. So I, I'm justified. I wish he did have money and he was this dumb because I would, I wish a bitch would finesse that nigga to the point where they finessed him into an actual marriage and he didn't realize it because he's just not paying attention to anything. And then took him for everything. <laughs> That's what he be doing. Going into bitches' houses. And he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a babysitter, basically. This woman is basically never at home. She's always working. And she lucked up on a nigga that is not an abuser. He's just dumb. And, you know, he's a big kid. So he's a good, he's a babysitter. He's a, ba- he's, she's, he's going to be a kid to her kid. Not an adult figure, but a kid to her kid. And, you know, uh, he's not coming off as a child abuser or anything. You know, she lucked up after seven weeks. I'm glad she didn't bring a child molester into her home or a person that's going to hit the child or a person that's going to emotionally abuse it. He's not emotionally abusing this child. He literally is just like being like just obtuse. Like he's just... Oh, I want to hesitate to say that he doesn't know this child's real name, but the way he was just moving and acting and talking, just completely like ignoring the fact that this is not this child's name. I'll give it to him. That's what I'm saying. Like he might be, he might have a delay, but he leaned into the assholeness of his personality rather than leaning into like let me expand my mind and learn things because people with delays people with down syndrome people with autism people with you know developmental issues they're not stupid (laughs) like they just learn different and like there's people with down syndrome that model and shit like that and handle their money and do regular people shit now there are like it's a it's a spectrum there are extreme cases where people like they're like a child basically for the rest of their lives that's it It, and it's not they're not stupid they're just they're just child-minded they're like a five-year-old forever and so you know they they interact with the world like a five-year-old is what it is and they need extra help in the world and so you know then we got the folks that got like developmental issues but like you know they they learn how to to maneuver through the world they learn how to learn in the way that that's capable for them and if they need to take their time on stuff they take their time on stuff and they figure it out you know and then you got the ones that like have like delays or developmental issues but also are assholes because personality and developmental stuff and mental health issues are three different things <laughs> i can have depression and you know i could like what did i say personalities mental health stuff and develop i can have depression so we won't include developmental stuff i had depression and like choose to deal with my depression because i'm a decent person by like helping myself and growing and changing and going to therapy and you know making choices to do better or i could have depression and decide to like be mean to people and hit people or you go and shoot up a school or some shit like that you know the shit that they say is the reason why that's not the reason why you shot up the school the reason why you shot up the school was because you chose to deal with your sadness by putting it on other people instead of working it through yourself that's the reason it wasn't the depression the depression made you feel justified in it (laughs) It i'm just so sad and then you like self-sabotage and talk yourself into some spiral and you know justified you know doing some fucked up shit like hitting your wife in the face but (laughs) like Tariq just chose to have a fucked up personality and also have a delay so like that means that instead of like noticing how he impacts other people in the world and learning from that he only focuses on himself but he's not like oh, fuck. cause he was he emotionally abusive to Janine or was he just a homosexual taking advantage and manipulating her just so he could take advantage of her money that's still like emotionally abusive though because she was fucked up over that he was emotionally abusive he played on her passiveness was it on purpose though that's the thing was it on purpose or was he just taking what he could get he was mean was he mean about it he wasn't mean like he didn't call her names or shit like that he just finessed it whenever she tried to set boundaries oh no like let's talk about it when we get home like oh no okay okay so he finesses it when people try to set boundaries he manipulates and finesses it that's what happened and uh, 
so I wouldn't say that he would purposely be hurtful to somebody and get joy out of seeing them hurt. That's what emotional abuse, that's like the main thing about emotional abuse. I get joy out of seeing you hurt. And also attached to that is I'm taking shit from you. I'm manipulating you. I'm keeping you down so you stick with me because I'm codependent and all that shit. So I would say it's on a spectrum. And so I don't want to say that he's a harmful person like on purpose but he's an asshole and so this is what a delayed nigga that's an asshole looks like (laughs) and oh a good example is that dude okay there's this tiktok video going around of this dude interviewing this husband and he's the husband is talking about how he cheated on his wife and you can tell in the speech is kind of slow and he's stuttering a little bit as he's working through and it's taking a minute for stuff to percolate in his brain because he has to think through what he has to say and stuff like that so you know you tell he got like maybe a little delay or something and so he cheated on his wife the dude is asking him so what have you done to be a better husband he goes (laughs) and this is legit he thinks this is like what's you could tell he thinks this is the way to go He's like, well, you know, I thought this was a great idea. You know, like, if I send her a heart every day, just text her a heart. And then every day that's added to the first day, I'll just text. Like, so if it's been 10 days, you know, I want to send 10 hearts, 11 days, 11 hearts. (laughs) Which they would fill up my fucking. (laughs) <laughs> just fill up my phone with some bullshit <laughs> shut up bitch and so like he thought that was the way to go even the interviewer was like cause you know there there is neurodivergency and developmental issues in the cis male community but because a lot of these cis men don't embrace their emotions and they don't embrace understanding who they are as individuals. It goes completely over people's head that this person has like a developmental something or other. Or they have like some kind of delay or neurodivergency. And it's mainly, you know, in childhood, we're overlooking these little boys. And we're just, you know, allowing them to just be in the world and fend for themselves. And they can't cry about it if they get hurt. Oh. Uh- <laughs> so we're not really giving a damn like and it's the same thing for like little black girls and stuff but like we're talking about the niggas right now let's give them a platform just like earlier i i admitted that black like women do things that maybe not isn't helpful in the community and let's move past that Uh, (laughs) and so you know like we overlooking these little black boys and uh, they they there's a lot of them that are just leaning into these toxic rhetorics as they get older and they're more prone to believe it because neurodivergency often not always comes with fixation qualities and so if i'm fixating from infancy until adulthood on incel and patriarchal rhetoric you fucking asshole (laughs) and i'm just gonna sound stupid when i do it (laughs) like which is it gives a bad it gives a bad face to people with developmental issues who did not choose to be assholes because it's still a choice because like i said they're not stupid it's just this fixation quality but you can change a fixation it's doable um especially if you start to notice that the people around you are hurt just like at the end where he noticed that that little boy has been giving me the stank eye and not responding to me for seven weeks, six, seven weeks for him to notice. But, you know, he noticed. Um, <laughs> and then he was like, okay, I'm going to call him by his name. And But he couldn't 100% give it to him. Now he's Kevin Sr. Mm, I wonder where this child's father is. Because <laughs> an excuse if they said his dad was dead or some shit and I missed it. But, you know, I don't think they did because I watched this shit like three times. Um, <laughs> I needed to get it right because I didn't take no fucking notes. <laughs> and so, like, he still couldn't, like, so his little incel thing rhetoric he stuck to was to only focus on himself and that women are creatures to take from. <laughs> and, you know, as long as he doesn't have to actively do things to make money, 
he could he could wash i think janine even said he he did chores at her house so you know he could he he does the like stay at home husband thing so now he is a babysitter so he's not like this horrible evil devil per he's just an asshole that's why it ain't even like like he's an asshole like he's a, he's an asshole with a de with a delay so he sounds even more dumb than he should because all of that like common sense and naivete stuff that comes with having like developmental issues sometimes that extra gullibility has went into him being an asshole and being and acting completely confused <laughs> when he's called out on shit <laughs> And being completely confused because he is he's just like but you're supposed to let me sleep on your couch and you know you're not upset with me what do you mean upset she janine wasn't upset with me taking from her she understands that you know that's why every time he sees her like it's and it's like childish too like he watched his mom go through this and he thought like 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 it was a cartoon or some shit and <laughs> like every time he sees her he's just like don't be trying to get with me i'm just like is that what your mommy did when your dad would come around would she try to get with him and you thought that was normal you just was like oh maybe this is like they take that shit literal like it's literal because they have that fixation everything is black and white and all this other stuff when you got shit like that so like that it's literal but everybody that grows up in like a traumatic household and has like a developmental shit like that they don't all end up like that i think boys have it slightly harder because like cis women like even in our friend if we're not getting that emotional stimulation at home we're getting it in our friendship groups like he hurt my feelings and and i don't know why and and he's so mean to me and da, 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 da and like little boys ain't getting it at home they're not getting in a friendship group they ain't getting it damn near nowhere sometimes and so if you just constantly surrounded by no examples of empathy or care <laughs> even if you are a decent person inside decent enough not to be abusive or hit people or hurt people's feelings completely on purpose like that you still like gonna end up thinking that rhetoric is real you just he just cart he, he makes it into a cartoon <laughs> And he's just looking stupid in the face when everybody is trying to tell him he's wrong. Hey, what do you mean? And so that's why, because he's so goofy about it, because he's like, you know, not necessarily malicious on purpose. Um, because sometimes I'm trying. Um, you know, he he just is like, everybody's just like, oh well, you know, you know, Tariq just pat on the head because i swear if it was me in this show and i was brenda i would pull him to the side and i would cuss him the fuck out and be like why aren't you paying attention to what's going on why are you calling this child out of his name are you not a grown-up are you a little child you know shit like that but that shit like he got he's child-minded that might that might traumatize him or some shit i don't know that's probably why they don't do it because they know like he can't handle so i'm like why aren't they yelling at him why aren't they cussing him out <laughs> He, they, they probably know that he couldn't handle that like he would have like a meltdown and not be sure about what's going on and he might dissociate because people probably did that to him as a child and shit he, that's how he dealt with it oh mental health is interesting <laughs> there's so many like it's a myriad of reasons why Tariq could be the way that he is men are so complicated like you see i got through janine pretty quickly like oh you know people pleasing she's a fixer she's triggered because she wants to help these kids and you know like she figured it out because she had good people around her to help her figure it out these niggas though like gregory over here not even knowing what 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 likability looks like and shit because he's been traumatized and he's also on the spectrum he is he's autistic um <laughs> and so he's over here confused about like why these kids in his room he's upset he's having like these emotional outbursts they're sitting on the desk <laughs> i'm upset 
hey, you got Tariq over here, like, just making up a fantasy land around what's actually going on between him and this child because he can't handle reality or some shit or he does, isn't aware of what reality is because he may have some kind of delay or some shit. And instead of, like, clocking that everybody's acting weird around him he's just so focused on himself that he is just gonna stay in this reality until seven weeks later he finally is able to come out of it a pinky toe (laughs) there's empathy in there he just had to keep making the sad face in front of him (laughs) for about seven weeks for him to get it you can't you can't explain it to him you because brenda explained it multiple times in various different ways um you can't explain it to him you you gotta just make him feel sick and sad about it just mope around him and shit and i just yeah janine was pretty quick like i had to break these niggas down and to reconstruct them what's going on because it because we know as a society we normalize these behaviors and we say because patriarchy says all these emotional things these niggas are doing is normal they are you know anger is not an emotion (laughs) that's why like when you break it down it's hard to decipher through you got to dig through some trash and dirt and collectibles and knickknacks and shit until you get to somewhat of the root i'm not 100 percent there on Tariq though because i just i don't want to call him delayed like that just feels like it's insulting <laughs> people who actually have delays and developmental issues but like i could see you can have a comorbidity you can have multiple like diagnoses and things going on at the same time it's like like you can have cancer and pancreatitis or some shit at the same fucking time so you know i you can you can have a delay and be an asshole because being an asshole is just a personality trait it's not a mental health thing or a developmental thing so you know that was my breakdown of this episode i thought i was shorter on the last review it's this it feels like it's long still and i'm just like the last review was long was a longer episode but i think i'm more tipsy this episode than i was in the last one and when i'm more tipsy then i drone on and on but in my mind it sounds like i'm saying smart things that everything needs to be included because i just feel like i say such profound things (laughs) they feel profound to me they feel right and i feel like i can't delete everything because somebody is gonna get something that i say and it's gonna help them like do better and then the more people it reaches out to it's gonna help them and then eventually the world is gonna slowly start to turn into a better place in some small pockets of people that i reach not to hold into i'm not a superhero but you know like i feel like i can't just delete everything everything is profound and i want that for you all too you all should feel like what you have to say and how you feel and all the thingamer babies is profound because it is like you you have a lived experience that is interesting and wonderful everybody has a fucking story and it's magical and if you lean more into the things that make you you and you just put your story out there you know in a way where ai can't steal it and make it into some movie and then you can't sue because you can't technically find the proof to connect it back (laughs) you see my mind just be all over the place uh (laughs) you know but you all have profound stories and they all deserve to be heard and my story is profound and i'm not deleting shit so if y'all niggas don't want to see an hour long some whatever video it is what it is. 
I'm a profound bitch. Fuck. Shit. So, you know, um, I hope you enjoyed this experiment, experience, and that you learn things and you take things away and it's a magical experience. And I'm going to go, you know, do my nighttime routine and go lay down because I do think I, I indulged more than the last. So enjoy this here. And I will talk to you later. Later days.